All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, good morning to people on the uh, West Coast here. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time to join us today on this uh, introduction to the HoverMap webinar. Um, without further ado, um, I'd like to uh, introduce the team. Um, so I'll get everybody to say hi here. Hi, I'm Camille Van Tassel, and I'm a solutions technician here at Candrone, and I'll be talking a little bit about um, what we've been doing with the hover map ourselves. I'm Russell Snow, I'm the sales manager at Candrone. Uh, I'll be going through uh, pricing, availability, and uh, a bit more about the hover map itself. Hello, my name is Dan Floor. I'm a technical business development manager for Emicent, uh, located here near Portland, Oregon. Happy to be here. Awesome. So just some uh, housekeeping items for today. Uh, we expect the presentation to be around 20 minutes uh, with a question period at the end of uh, the webinar here. Uh, we'll try to wrap it up within an hour to in, in respect of your time. Um, and um, you can feel free to input any questions uh, into the question box on the side here as we go along in this webinar. And um, after I go through this agenda, we'll just uh, turn off our cameras so to avoid any distractions. Uh, but yeah, essentially for this webinar, uh, we're going to go through the first part is just an introduction and an overview of the equipment. Um, and then we'll go into uh, the ways that you can use this system to scan. Then we'll look at some, uh, some data sets uh, from forestry, AEC, and urban uh, areas. And then we'll go through the workflow. Um, and then look at some uh, upcoming features from uh, Emicent, and then finally leave it out with a question and answer period. So I'll pass it back to Dan here. All right, uh, thank you, Van. Um, so just a little bit about Emicent, um, start off. Uh, Emicent was founded in 2018, um, and that was after 10 years already of research and development with uh, an organization called CSIRO, which is Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization. Um, and they're in Brisbane, Australia. Uh, we currently have a, a little over 100 people, just hit that, that mark here in the last couple of weeks. Um, and we're located now in the US, the UK, and uh, as I said, headquartered in Brisbane. Um, with a deep background in underground mining, uh, pardon the pun, uh, Emerson has built a capability for high quality data capturing uh, in the mining, the infrastructure, survey, and the mapping industries is where we're focusing. Uh, on the Americas team specifically, we are growing to support resellers such as Candrone and their customers. Uh, we're bringing on staff here in the US um, to localize customer support, uh, service and repair center, and inventory management are all on the, on the plans and in work, trying to work into reduced lead times and ensure the resellers and their customers are well supported. Uh, personally, I have a long background in unmanned aviation, uh, starting in, in manufacturing and payload integration and development, uh, solutions engineering and customer engagements, uh, both on the commercial and the defense markets. Um, I joined Emerson just earlier this spring, and I look forward to helping uh, manage the growth here in Americas. Thank you, Dan. The hover map is a versatile SLAM-based LiDAR mapping solution uh, that can be mounted on a drone or as a standalone mobile mapping system. It was designed for environments where there's no GPS, no radio communications, uh, no existing maps, or where accessibility for humans was difficult, uh, although it's not limited to those environments. The hover map weighs in at 1.8 kilos, so it's a perfect partner for the M200 and 300 series of drones. Uh, it comes with an optional RGB camera to allow you to colorize your point cloud. And at Candrone, we've been lucky enough to work with a number of great aerial and mobile LiDAR scanners over the years, uh, but we've never had anything before that has the versatility uh, and flexibility of the of the hub map. The unit itself uses the Velodyne VLT16 LiDAR sensor, uh, which you 
will may probably know from other other lidar units. Uh, now, Emerson has very strict quality controls on the sensors that they accept from Belladyne, so you can be guaranteed that you're getting a reliable unit every single time. The VLP16 is capable of achieving 300,000 points per second and can generally achieve accuracies in the two to three centimeter region. Uh, although in really up close mode, it can get down to as little as 0.5 centimeters. Uh, by really close, we mean around three to five meters away. Now, where the hover map really shines is in GPS denied environments. Uh, this could be tunnels, mines, factories, uh, the underside of bridges, uh, and many other hard to map environments. Uh, the hover map is currently being used in industries, industries such as mining, urban planning, oil and gas, and in industrial infrastructure management, uh, as well as construction and, and AEC, which we'll, we'll talk a bit more about, as well as forestry. Now, mining has traditionally been a very difficult industry to map, uh, but I've, I've lost count of the number of times since we started selling the hover map that someone, in particular from mining, uh, has called it a game changer. And to explain more about how this is achieved using SLAM, I'm going to hand over to Camille. Yeah, so the hover map is a SLAM based system like Russell had mentioned. And just so everyone is aware, SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. And it's using um, a real time, like the SLAM is using a real time. Uh, map segments to update the drone, which enables it to maintain awareness of the environment. Um, and this hover map is a system using the Wildcat SLAM algorithm to convert uh, 3D LiDAR data into a detailed and accurate map of the environment in real time. And so this basically the te technology combines LiDAR and IMU data to position the robot and detect height of objects to act as a map for the drone. Uh, one of the biggest advantages of this LiDAR system, again, like Russell had mentioned, is the ability to operate even in GPS denied environments. And it has a very streamlined system setup. So this makes it really easy for the system to be integrated into a variety of applications, which we will talk about shortly. And now some environments are not optimal for a SLAM based system. So scanning over large open areas would pose to be challenging as there wouldn't be that many features in the environment for the SLAM to work off of. And with any SLAM-based system, um, it's susceptible to a little bit of drift over a large scanning area. So those are some things to be aware of. But to get the best results, uh, it's really important to make sure that your um, the scan area you're in has lots of features and you close the loop in your trajectory path. Uh, and this is done by circling back to the same area where you started the scan. And this allows the hover map to see everything in the area twice. So it optimizes the SLAM's positioning and minimizes any drift. And it also helps to keep scan times under 30 minutes to keep post-processing and Emerson software running smoothly. Yeah, so as we mentioned earlier, uh, one of the, the high value features of Hovermap is its flexibility of use. Um, a single Hovermap unit can, can be used in, in various applications and changed um, be, between and about 30 seconds. Uh, there's a V-mount for a mechanical fit, a V-mount bracket, and then one or two wires depending on the application. Uh, it's very simple. Um, so a couple of few little pictures here, um, you know, we can, we can do a walking scan with it in your hand or in a backpack and the backpack carries the batteries so your hands are completely free um, and that allows for easy movement to cover the area and especially in, in uh, walking mode it's, it's very easy to kind of uh, poke it into difficult confined spaces to get some coverage in those areas um, there's a picture of a cage in the bottom left there um, and that allows the hover map to be lowered into tunnels and bores and passes and shafts um, 
ver vertical vertical shafts um, to re reduce the shock and vibration of the sensor, but also to uh, allow it to uh, smoothly go down and, and come back up without getting kind of stuck and caught. Um, of course, it can be drill mounted, and we'll talk a lot more about that later today. Uh, it can be mounted on a vehicle with a magnetic or a suction cup mount, as shown there. Um, and it, it also can be mounted in various different ways onto unmanned ground vehicles or robots. Um, Emerson has integrated it into the Boston Dynamics RoboDog, uh, you may have seen. Um, and we've de demonstrated that with law enforcement uh, in a few different search and rescue scenarios, allowing them to to see what's what uh, what the environment is before they send personnel in in a potential danger situation. Um, Emerson's also involved in the DARPA T challenge, and I just mentioned that because it's another um, interesting integration where the hover map is mounted on a drone that is actually transported into the the cave in that DARPA T ch challenge, um, and together the um, the ground robot that transports it in there and the drone uh, work together to autonomously search and map the area, but also find some very specific objects that are part of the test. Um, so it's, it's a very versatile system um, and allows uh, users to have one, one platform, one system, uh, which they can use and deploy in different ways and, and only need to be trained on, on one system. Uh, so specific to the drone um, application, um, like I said before, with, you know, the same unit, we can mount it onto the drone in about 30 seconds. Um, it clips on the bottom there and a couple wires. Um, and besides the mapping capabilities, Emerson has been focusing a lot on autonomy. Uh, we have three different levels of, of system available uh, with the same piece of hardware. Uh, so we call that the basic level, we call it hover map mapping, and that level is slam mapping capabilities only. Um, so it's, it, it's attached to the drone um, as, as, as the platform to get it to move around. Um, there's, there's no autonomy there, and the drone operator, of course, is in full control. Hover map plus is the next level, um, and that provides pilot assist with omnidirectional collision avoidance. Um, allow, allowing line of sight navigation and mapping of the drone. It's good good application for undersided bridges, uh, confined spaces uh, where GPS is is challenged, um, or where it's just tight, and we want that extra level of of protection around the aircraft, that, that bubble of protection. Um, the next level is what we call hover map autonomy, and that enables autonomous waypoint navigation and mapping beyond line of sight in GPS denied environments. Um, here the pilots set the waypoints even without knowing the map of the area beyond them. Um, and this can be used to navigate uh, dangerous areas, inaccessible spaces. Uh, this is what is, is very common in um, underground in the mining environment. Um, this, this level uh, does require some advanced training and a little bit of extra know-how. Um, to do it, which is all provided uh, via Candrone and others um, through through Emerson. Um, at any time, the system is upgradable uh, should the customer's need change. Um, it's like I said, it's the same piece of hardware, so it's a software update, um, so allowing uh, the system to to uh, change as your needs change. Um, as a closing, uh, just a capability here, the, the hover map can detect obstacles um, such as wires. As, as small as two millimeters in size. Um, so it's, it's a very, um, very capable for, for um, collision avoidance. So the hover map workflow is very streamlined as you can see by this very simple slide. Uh, after data capture, it's just a quick USB transfer of the data and then you can just drag and drop the project scan folder into the Emerson processing software. And that's where um, you, it compiles the scan files into a point cloud. And um, you'll get a file type that's readily available, including um, LAS, as well as a DXF file type. And uh, yeah, those are both the most common and the, the easy, most easily outputted file formats. And then you can put that into any um, analysis software after. So again, the Emerson processing, processing software was designed for ease of use with drag and drop functionality. 
and the output for formats um, are compatible with a variety of modeling and JS software um, programs, including PIX4D, Autodesk, and Esri products. And the processing time can take about one to two times the length it took to actually acquire the data. So if you did a 10 minute scan in the field, uh, it would take about 10 up to 20 minutes to have a LES point cloud as the output. Yeah, thanks, Camille. Uh, so let's just talk about a, a few use cases. Um, I'll start off with some architectural engineering and construction side. Um, so in these industries, being able to quickly and accurately create a 3D model um, is, a, is a growing interest and a growing value to those industries. Um, for example, an old building blueprints might not be accurate or they might not even exist, uh, but they're needed for renovations and maybe seismic upgrades. Um, in a new construction environment, we can quickly capture a 3D model of the current state of the, of the project. Um, and, be, and that can be used for supplier building verification, um, stakeholder progress reports, um, even documentation of soon to be buried or hidden infrastructure um, underground or be behind walls, what have you, uh, just to name a few. Um, the flexibility of Hovermat allows it to capture data that traditional TLS systems can sometimes take a long time to capture. Um, and so because of the ability to move the scanner around uh, and not be state, not be stable and stuck to a tripod, um, and, and the ability to also kind of point it into holes, um, into uh, small spaces, maybe a hole in the ceiling, and see all the infrastructure above the uh, the drop ceiling, that kind of stuff. Um, it it allows because of the movement, you're able to reduce or even remove the lidar shadow effect that is common. Uh, so 3D models are great. Um, for many applications, but but often uh, really what is wanted is traditional 2D drawings uh, or a floor plan. Uh, and so Hovermap data does seamlessly integrate into uh, industry leading software tools um, like Revit, uh, Recap, uh, Point Fuse, Point Cab, uh, just to name a few. Uh, and then you can quickly convert that into a, a measurement accurate drawing. Uh, here, here's a little video to highlight kind of the workflow I'm talking about. So a big, large uh, warehouse facility scanned on the outside by hand. Or sorry, what the draw on the outside was done. And then they did a, a walking scan through the office complex, the cube land there, and uh, scanned everything with a walk through in 15 minutes. Now bring it into point fuse. Bring the point the point uh, cloud into point fuse. Some different workflows there. Um, create mesh models. Just kind of notice the the square lines, the fineness of those walls shows the uh, the accuracy. So now it's converted into a 2D floor plan. Oh, with that software. Can also get a parametric BIM available for other needs. In that example, it took that individual 75 minutes. So pretty, pretty quick. Um, all right, so uh, next next here is just an, another example of essentially the same scenario. But here, uh, a, a UK teammate took his hover map uh, and went by himself. Uh, it's a one-man operation, and he walked outside this historic church for 12 minutes. Then he walked around the outside of the facility, uh, as you can see in the, the top picture there, for 11 minutes. Uh, he merged the LiDAR point clouds into a seamless inside and outside colorized model. Um, he brought it in, brought the point cloud into uh, his favorite software package and created the drawing on the right-hand side there. 
so in, in pretty quick order, uh, now we have two data products. One is the UK Heritage Agency is using can use this now, uh, colorized point cloud uh, that will be used for virtual tours of this historic church. Um, and they also now have an architectural drawing that they're going to use for further renovations and upkeep of the of the facility. Um, so the key attribute I wanted to kind of try to get across with these these two examples is the ability to capture and create measurement accurate models um, of complicated spaces, difficult, uh, lots of lots of hidden spaces, uh, but be able to turn those around into engineering and architectural artifacts. Awesome. So just moving to another application that the hover map really shines is, for example, in forestry. So here we did a scan that took only five minutes. And then after post-processing in the Emerson software, we brought the data into a program called LiDAR 360 to do an individual tree segmentation and then quantify uh, diameter at breast height and get those measurements. So th this output can be used by forestry professionals to monitor tree growth and assess the tree volume for timber harvest management. Um, here is an exterior, exterior scan we did for an arena, which took about 10 minutes, and the output was really clean, low noise point cloud. So another, another good example of how quickly you can process the data and uh, get a clean output. Uh, here is another urban scan we did that took 10 minutes. Um, so not only is this a pretty picture, but you can take accurate measurements of buildings and infrastructure in the point cloud. Um, and exemplified in this scan, you can see the straight and crisp lines that the hover map produces that is really next to none with other Velodyne sensors we've seen, as well as other uh, LiDAR sensors in general. It's just, it's just so crisp and, and clean. Um, and then, so this one is uh, an interior scan, or we, st we started the data collection on the outside of the building and then we moved into the interior. And the hover map scan uh, like this could be used for a virtual presentation for stakeholders to you know, showcase the project's progress. And this could be done over multiple times over the course of a development project um, as it's very fast to collect the data and process it. Over to you, Dan. Yeah, thanks, Camille. Uh, so I'll just talk a little bit about what the Emerson uh, development teams are, are working on. Um, just I just wanted to mention a couple of the things. It's a fairly long list they're working on, but a couple I wanted to point out today is um, the, the addition of the Ardu or the, the PixHawk-based autopilot drone platforms. Um, Earlier this week, it was uh, announced, and, and uh, next next month at a uh, show in Las Vegas, we'll be releasing the first integration, and that is with the Ace Court Zoe platform, as shown in the picture here. Um, it's a it's a European platform. It's tightly integrated with HoverMap, and it allows the customers that are sensitive to Chinese manufactured platforms uh, to have an alternative for for HoverMap drone operations. Uh, next on the docket for that same team is they're working on a USA-made platform, um, so just to further bring capabilities and options to customers. Uh, we're going to continue to support the DJI platforms as they're, of course, uh, very capable and a, a good common platform out there as well. So um, those will continue. Uh, secondly, I just wanted to mention as well the analytics um, work that Emicent is beginning and working on. Um, trying to further improve workflow and user experience. Um, so we're doing this through uh, close work with some key customers that, uh, that can, can benefit from these. So we're, getting, we're developing this in tandem with in-field um, uh, iterative design and, and testing, uh, which, is, which is fabulous. Uh, so they're, they're focusing at this point on things like change detection, volumetrics, uh, some various filters, um, trying to find uh, and bring capability that are good for the underground, the EC and some general above ground use cases. 
Um, so those are some of the things that are in work. And of course, there'll be more, more capabilities um, coming as time goes on. Thank you, Dan and Cami, for that. Uh, that just leaves me now to talk about the pricing and the availability of the unit. Uh, just a reminder, if you do want to ask a question, just uh, type it in the question box and we'll get to those after this slide. So the Harvard map is currently in extremely high demand. Uh, Emerson making them as fast as they can, but the estimated lead time is around eight weeks uh, plus shipping from Australia. Uh, however, Canjone has two units arriving here on Friday. Um, both are currently available for purchase. Uh, we operate first come, first served. So if you are desperate to get your hands on one, then we have two arriving. Uh, prices start from around 70,000 Canadian dollars, and you can add extras like the camera for the colorization, uh, the backpack, the mounts, the cage uh, that Dan was talking about. Uh, Hovermap comes with three support packages silver, gold, and platinum. As you move up through the options, you increase things like the amount of warranty you get. Uh, there's an increased discount on accessories. Uh, you receive additional training with gold and platinum. Uh, and importantly, if you're looking to own a fleet of hover maps, uh, as you go up through the, the range, the discount on additional units, uh, your fleet expansion discount gets higher. So you get an 8% discount on a second one if you have a silver package, 20% uh, with gold, and 30% with platinum. Uh, one important thing to note is that the platinum package also includes a backup unit should anything happen to your hover map. Candrone also runs a successful rental and service division. Uh, we currently have two hover maps available for rent, uh, although I must point out that it's only currently possible to use the mapping level uh, if you want to use it yourself. Uh, if you want to use any of the autonomous flight functions of Mapping Plus or Autonomy, then you'll need to make a booking with our service team, uh, which includes one of our expert pilots for your additional peace of mind. So if you want any more information, uh, on the specifics of the pricing uh, or to discuss uh, rentals or service, then please reach out to the sales team using the details on the next page. Or if you're already dealing with one of the sales team, please reach out directly to them. And that concludes our presentation today. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'm gonna hand over to Van, who's going to moderate uh, today's Q&A session. Awesome, thank you, Russell, and thank you again to everybody that has attended. Um, just uh, heads up that the presentation will be uh, recorded and it will be uploaded to our social media. So um, that addresses the first question from uh, Vincent. Uh, he's asking if the presentation is available in a PDF format. Um, yes, I can definitely uh, create uh, export this as a PDF and uh, email it to you after, but it will be recorded. Um, so the first question that we have is uh, can, from Vincent again, uh, can we geolocate geo the data and is the data compatible with Deswick software? Yeah, and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll let uh, Daniel or... Yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry, I was fighting with my mute there. Um, <laughs> yes, Deswick um, is, is commonly used uh, in with some of our customers and um, geolocation can, can be done uh, if you're deep underground and geolocating it. Of course, there's um, techniques um, to, to connect to that to real, real geospace um, connections, if, if you know what I mean, uh, in terms of um, to a GIS grid as opposed to um, uh, referenced uh, upon itself, if, if that makes sense. Um, so, but Des Deswick is, is very common. Yeah, and to add to that, uh, when you are using the hover map uh, on on the drone, it does have uh, get geolocation, um, and then there's yeah other other things like uh, spherical targets that can be put down um, that we've uh, seen used in the past there. 
Um, yeah, and so to continue the next question, um, what accuracy can uh, be derived um, and is sub two centimeters possible? So that's from Joe. So two, two centimeters is, is, is very common. Um, there's obviously, obviously, as Camille, I believe it was shared, there's some best practices that um, are good to, to use to, to get those, but two centimeters is very possible from a drone or a hand, hand carry uh, modality. Okay, thank you, Joe, for that question. Um, so the next question is from Kyle. Um, so he's asking, what is the process for colorizing laser scan if you have uh, the package. Uh, Dan again. Uh, so the the process all fits in with um, the Emerson software that was was shown in one of the earlier slides. Um, and so you you upload or in, input the point cloud information as well as the recorded video that was recorded and um, set some settings in the software, uh, a few checkboxes and alignments, and uh, it will merge those together. And essentially what it's doing is aligning them, finding the color that matches, the pixel color that matches with the point cloud point, and then applying a color to it. Thank you, Dan. Um, let's see. So waiting for any further questions here. Um, okay. It doesn't look like there's any further questions so far. Um, so, so here's another question for you. So is it uh, is it difficult to attach the hover map to the M300 from um, the uh, mobile scanning? Maybe Russell or yeah, um, I'm having to that. So yeah, not difficult at all. Uh, the uh, home app comes with a uh, a mount and uh, just plug directly into the uh, M300. And so yeah, very 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 easy is the is the answer to that one. Okay. Another common question is: uh, Do we offer financing or payment plans uh, for one of these systems? Uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that one as well. Um, we do work with finance companies in uh, Canada and the US, uh, and there are also two different ways of uh, purchasing through Emerson. There's either an upfront price, uh, which is slightly cheaper, or there's a price which has three annual payments, so you pay for it in, uh, in three installments. Uh, so yeah, want, want to reach out to the to the sales team if you have questions about that. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, so it doesn't look like there's uh, any other uh, questions coming through the chat or the questions box. Um, but um, yeah, our, our team is always here and available. Um, please feel free to uh, send us an email at support at Candrone or give us a call um, if you have any any further questions, and we'd uh, love to to help you out and find the right ladder solution for you. Um, so, so one, one, one's just, uh, another question just popped up uh, about offices and distributors in Quebec, um, which I can take. Uh, we don't currently have an office in Quebec, uh, but we have uh, members of the sales team in Toronto. Uh, so we'd be happy to work uh, with you from, uh, from our Toronto office. Okay, and I think that's it. Um, well, yeah, that's we can kind of end it short here. But uh, again, thank you so much uh, for everybody uh, for attending our webinar today. And um, yeah, we'll be sending out a, a recap, and we look forward to uh, speaking to some of you um, further. Um, so yeah, that concludes it. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.